Hello and welcome everybody to another lesson on threading. If you haven't signed up for the Academy, go to academy.switchembedded.com and sign up because you get access to the currently um, produced courses for free. Uh, and once the course is finished, it's not going to be free anymore. So go there and sign up academy.switchembedded.com. You'll find the link below. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about cancelling threads and uh, cancelling threads is quite a risky procedure uh, if you don't do it properly because uh, in difference with processes threads are in the same threads exist in the same memory space as your uh, parent application <clears throat> so uh, when you cancel a thread uh, you don't you cannot there's no way to automatically free resources that are allocated to that thread uh, whereas with a process you can easily uh, you can easily keep track of the resources or the operating system does that for you. So when you kill a process, it's easy to uh, deallocate all the memory that has been allocated for that process. Uh, this is not true for threads. And so um, we can't just kill a thread. Uh, we have to uh, cancel a thread at specific points. That's the recommended way of doing it. Uh, so we have uh, a number of operations. Uh, when you work with pthread library, you will have access to these operations. If you're working with some other threading library, uh, there might be, um, or there probably are, equivalent operations uh, for uh, aborting a thread. Uh, and um, the operations are uh, as follows. So let's let's start with uh, drawing a little doodle diagram here. So we have two threads here. And we have our main application that has created these two threads. Now, these threads uh, run at their own pace. They can sleep, they can allocate memory, they can, um, uh, they can interact with IO, uh, and uh, they can access files, they can do whatever uh, a normal application does. Um, now, suppose that in our main application, we want to uh, cancel one of these threads. Uh, so this becomes a little bit um, dangerous because we don't know what the thread is doing. So what we have to do is configure whether we want to cancel the thread asynchronously uh, or whether we want to cancel the thread at specific points. So we, had, we have a function call, called uh, pthread, uh, pthread uh, set uh, cancel type. type which can be either uh, deferred or asynchronous uh, deferred means that we will only cancel the thread at specific points which we set in code and asynchronous means that we cancel at any time whenever we call uh, the function pthread cancel. And the way that uh, the way that deferred cancellation works is that you place specific calls uh, when when it's safe to cancel the thread. So we have a special uh, function called pthread uh, test cancel and um, this this function will cancel the thread if uh, if the cancellation is pending. So you can run some code here. Uh, you initialize the co cancellation here, and then you can continue, continue, continue until you hit a point where it's safe, and then your thread calls uh, this uh, test cancel, and uh, at that point the thread is destroyed. Uh, you can also enable and disable cancellations. That's done with a set cancel state. Uh, and uh, and uh, if if you want if you do if you do use uh, the asynchronous cancellation that will by the way just kill the thread right away um, if you do use that cancellation uh, you really have to make sure that your thread is just using the stack uh, and not allocating any memory um, and not accessing any shared resources. Uh, if your thread is very simple and doesn't um, doesn't uh, access any variables, maybe maybe it's just computing something and then returning the result, then you can use asynchronous con cancellation. It's going to work fine because there is nothing uh, that can be messed up after after you cancel uh, just randomly. Uh, 
but uh, for most cases, uh, you should really either use a conditional variable that uh, that will exit the thread uh, or exit the thread loop if the thread is running in a loop, uh, or um, uh, sorry, I mean, if, if you have a loop in your main thread function, if, if your thread is kind of executing a, a looping task, then you can use a conditional variable that I showed in a different video. Uh, but uh, uh, typically you want to use uh, test cancel to, um, to cancel the thread uh, so that you have full control over the cancellation process. So... Um, while this mechanism is available, it's uh, it's not recommended that you use it. It's better to let the thread uh, do its work and then exit normally uh, when it's ready with whatever it is doing. Uh, or just keep running and, and just reading messages that are being sent to it and processing data and then putting data back. Uh, but if, if you ever want to cancel a thread, you know that there is a way to do that. Uh, but be careful. So that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the academy if you haven't signed up for the free um, for the free course right now the threading course is free right now until this course is uh, is done uh, then go to academy.swishembedded.com and sign up for the course let me know what you think uh, comment on the course your input is very valuable uh, so um, I'll see you later